Do you want to chat with us and other Team Respawn Dangos? Well then join our Discord, link in the video description. Okay, well greetings and salutations everyone. Welcome back to Halo Wars Definitive Edition modding. Uh, today we're going to be looking at a really, really great mod. This is all the units mod. Um, this mod was made by Nomad Thunder. He actually reached out to me and wanted me to cover this mod and I was happy to do so. This mod is going to take a lot of things from, or bits and pieces from different kinds of mods and also make sure that you're able to build as many units as possible. Um, this mod is the most overwhelming and enjoyable thing I've ever played. I, I mean overwhelming in a good way. This mod is, is so cool. There's just so many great fan service things that are in here. Before we begin, let's take a look at the leaders. We have our normal six, uh, and this is kind of similar to the more leaders mod that I have been covering. There is the Flood, and then there is the Rebels, and instead of the Jackal leader that we see in the more leaders mod, we have the Grunt Rebellion, and I believe there's also um, units added in to the other base characters as well. Um, so I really love to see what the difference is between the, the Flood in this mod compared to the Flood in the more leaders mod. Um, so you're going to get a little confused by re me referring to all the units, which is this mod, and the more leaders mod, which is what I have been covering. Um, there is a playlist for all of this stuff if you're curious to see what's changed between mod to mod, because uh, there is... The mod community in Halo Wars Defend Edition is really, really cool, and it's the reason why the game is still going on to this day. So I'm going to play as Cutter, because all the units uh, uh, works for Cutter. Um, as for maps, let's see here. I would like to play... I think Blood River is a good map, and we'll we'll go up we'll go up against Arby. Um, Nomad did want me to reach out and give some shoutouts before we begin. Uh, he has some credits to the real slim the real slim lady for making the leader overhaul mod, Lord Nutritious for the extra troops that are in here, um, as well as the real slim lady again for the custom icons. Um, so it, there, these other people, uh, contribute in the Halo Wars modding community as well, and I believe all of them have mods as well. The next mod we're going to cover after this is the Nutritious mod from Lord Nutritious. That is on my list as well. Let's go ahead and get going here. Put this on normal. Here we go. Alright, so let's zoom out first and foremost. What you're going to see here um, is just that this base is so different than what we're used to. It takes a lot of things from the campaign. Can I... No, I guess I can. I was trying to do some camera modifications. You'll see that there's... We have our UNSC base that's normal. Let's go ahead and start building some supply pads. And what is different is we can build heavy supply pads right off the bat for 350 supplies. I'm going to opt for that. And I'm going to wait for one of these to build so we can kill our third. We don't have the resources here. We have some scout units. This one's called the Double Barrel Scout Warhog. I forgot what that one is. I believe that's when you upgrade it to Gunner. You It fires double the shots. And then we have our regular Flame Warthog. And there's going to be a ton of units in here, so this is going to get pretty overwhelming pretty quickly. A Warthog just got built that we didn't ask for, but I believe... I don't know if that has anything to do with the supply pad being built or what, or if it's a timed thing. But this is the Scout Warthog, and what's different about this one is how fast it moves. And it may not seem all that different on video, but I gotta tell you, this thing really just flies around the map, and actually can get in a little bit of trouble, it, it goes so fast. Oh, he already has his leader up. 
Yeah, he has a temple, okay. Let's come back to the base. Since I've seen Arby, I may want to start working on some defenses. We have three turrets now, which is great. We have our normal turret. Then we have a watchtower, which is very similar to the watchtower in Halo Wars 2. Then we also have this heavy turret. Uh, it deals higher damage than the regular turret at the cost of a slow fire rate in charge, uh, in charge to the cannon. So, if I queue up a regular tower here, I believe this shoots the Rhino round that we see in the campaign. And do the regular supply pads? They still cost a hundred. So it's actually like economically not worth if my math is right, to do the heavy supply pads because you can get a supply pad for 100 and then upgrade it for 225, which brings your cost to 325. So you're, you're paying 25 more resources to have it be a heavy supply pad right out of the gate, which is fine. These uh, forklifts here, whoops, that's the wrong button. Thank you. <laughs> the, uh, this is the police tower from Arcadia. And this is where you can actually garrison infantry. So we have three garrisons here. We also have an additional uh, pad right here that we can build. I'll go ahead and... I'll make this a reactor, actually. We also, it's kind of hard to see, but there is another turret slot here. I'll make that a watchtower. Now, the watchtower building is kind of like already built, uh, but it, it does take time to train, as, as you can see here. Let's go ahead and tell our Warthogs to get some more crates. Now, we have some other unique buildings in this mod. This is Anders Tower from the Dome of Light mission, and if you can zoom in here, we can really see Anders working at the computer. Uh, but this is where a lot of upgrades occur for a lot of the units, because there's so many units in this mod. Uh, so there's different types of Marines. You'll see that there's your regular Marines and Shotgun Marines and maybe a third type. Um, but you can upgrade your Shotgun Marines to throw frag grenades. Your Flamethrowers can have the Flashbane and a flashbang ability. Some of the regular upgrades that you know have been relocated for easier use, so your regular buildings can have more units. Uh, we can build snipers, so this is a sniper armor upgrade, and the repair kit for the Cyclops. Better scopes, this is a really cool upgrade for the snipers, and then stun grenades for the marine grenadiers. You, there's also a second page you can get an extra Spartan upgrade. Uh, you can get some ODSTs here. You only need two power in this one. Special training for, uh, for infantry. Now this is really cool. You get a permanent veterancy level of one for all infantry. And the same, uh, let's see here. This is for Spartans. You get a star. Spartan, for Spartan Foresight. The enhancement allows them to dodge incoming projectiles. The last page... Well, this isn't the last page. I thought it was. Here's some elephant upgrades. The twin engine. The one for gremlin focusing lens. Cobra deflection plating. Volley for the wolverines. This is so cool. You can now uh, get a missile cobra. A cobra with a missile launcher on it. Which is pretty neat. And then there's a new vehicle called Sun Devils. They look a little bit like scorpions with shorter barrels, and they are anti-air. Oh, we're getting attacked already, I see. Under attack. And we can also build rhinos. That's actually quite a bit of stuff. Let's go ahead and drop a mac. So I will actually... So that heavy turret is actually firing. It's just firing right at Arby's, so we're not really seeing the round do anything. Let's just, like, kill up all of our turrets here. And there's another one there. I've noticed the AI loves to attack quite often with this mod, which is fine. Turret 
Uh, you can also build elite rangers for the Covenant, which is really, really cool. So you, we can see these different types of units a little bit. Complete. Now, the most unique one in this mod, which is such a cool idea, is called the Turret Build complete. Hog. And you Turret need three complete. power to build it, but what this does is this Turret allows complete. you to build a building wherever Turret you want complete. for an extremely high price. And at first I didn't believe it, but then I went ahead and, and built the vehicle. Turret complete. And we did it, and it was just, it was insane. We have a combat Cyclops. Let's see. It's in, it's equipped with a fast-firing plasma rifle. It has decent health and a shield to protect it from incoming damage. These units can be good Turret to slow complete. the enemy down while dealing moderate damage attack. That's pretty cool. Let's upgrade our reactor. Our reactor also has upgrades in it. <laughs> so this is where you can purchase the carpet bomb. Uh, you can also get this uh, FTL core. It serves reactor as reactor. one reactor, and I believe you can tow this around the... Tow this behind the elephant, just like you can in the campaign. Let's see if I can get the repair kit. There are a ton of upgrades here. There it is, repair kit. There's also these flashing beacons here. And what these beacons do is they allow you to add additional things. So you can build a watchtower here, uh, but it is garrisonable, this watchtower. It's a little bit different of a watchtower. Over here, this is one of my favorite ones, a special infantry barracks. You pay the penalty to uh, build this building, and in here it unlocks a lot of new infantry. So I can start building like the Arcadia Police. Uh, here we have flamethrowers, cyclops again. Here's our marine grenadiers and our shotgun marines. And you can also build an ODST squad right out of here. So now it's kind of like how Cutter kind of is in Halo Wars 2, where you can have ODSTs and marines at the same time. I just think that's so cool if you, you can zoom in and, and really look at these... Uh, Repair kit. These police squad, just like how they are in Arcadia. I thought that was really cool. If we go over to the regular barracks, we have our Marines, the Sniper Marines again, and then Rocket Marines, a Marine wielding an RPG to destroy incoming vehicles, which is cool. There's also these... You, you, would ha you have to click on this and then wait for your units to finish training to go to the second page. Um, but... Going over to this, it says you transfer to the leader overhaul leaders and custom squads page. So this is some of the stuff from the leader overhaul menu, I believe. Here we are with another attack. It just seems to be a lot of elite rangers. And those heavy turrets are doing really good, really good work. So I can actually take the Arcadia police and get them to garrison in that tower. I'll put that rocket marine over here. Let's see if that does anything cool. We can also start building our vehicle depot and our air pad. Let's see. See, they get in, and then the forklift kind of just goes up. Kind of needs stuff here. Looks like these units don't want to move. Okay, there they go. So there's the ODSTs. And then there's the sniper marines and the shotgun marines. So if we go over now to the custom menu squad, we get a marine scouts, a light marine squad. Ooh, a marine assault squad. Look at this. Two marines. Uh, see, this this thing, this game bugs me sometimes. The description, like, automatically scrolls, so I have to, like, continuously scroll up to read it. <laughs> Uh, let's see, this squad consists of two marines with assault rifles, a marine with a shotgun, two marines with a BR, and a Spartan with a BR. A Hornet also supports this squad. Let's put one of those. That's really cool. Let's All take everyone we have so far move them down there. Air pad complete. Also, when you build... Like, I just built that air pad and that Hornet got built. So, I, I sometimes... I think building some buildings automatically queues up 
some sort of unit. Oh, that's so cool. So, if we zoom in here, we can see the Spartan and the Marines. And then I actually can't control that Hornet because when I go to hover hover over it, you know, it wants to select that Marine squad. I want to see how this works in battle. I, th I think that's kind of cool. A little OP, really. Um, over here, let's see. We have the ODST Marine Army. Is a large group of Marines and ODST mixed together. This is a menacing army that is effective against all unit types and will bring hell to the battlefield. Let's build one of those. We can also build some leaders. So you can build Anders, Forge. Let's see, Spartan with a battle rifle. That's different because we can also train our leaders out of this Pelican, which I was going to get to in a moment. I want to see what this looks like. Oh, there it is. Sometimes they don't want to move. Are we stuck? Let's see if a pelican works. Yeah, we don't want to move. We don't want to get... Oh, wait, wait. No. We may have an L here. I think they're just stuck. What happens if I mack them? Will I get them to move? No, we don't want to move. <laughs> of course, these mods aren't perfect. That's okay. Let's see. We can go to the, now the Spartan menu. You can build all sorts of Spartans. SMG, shotgun, grenade launcher, sniper, minigun, rocket, and laser. And now we're back to the beginning. But there is a lot that you can do here just in the barracks. The air pad's kind of similar to what we're used to. However, there are... Let me upgrade some of our reactors here. I know this one, you can build a new construction pad. So you got to click on these beacons. And it really expands your base into other things that you can use. Some of them, we can just build a reactor here. Some of them are watchtowers, and some of them are um, turret slots. There's a construction pad here. So I, I think there's a little bit of discrepancy in the values of the cost of some of these pads, because the one up here was like 250 The ones back here were like well over 1000 So I think it's important. Yeah, see, this one's 250 as well. And if, if you're overwhelmed right now with the amount of stuff, that's okay. This mod is meant to give you just everything. This is like one of those no compromises kind of a mod. And uh, it, this is one of my favorite favorite mods I've covered yet. So let's see how our... And everything just works. How cool is that? There's no health bar on here. And this guy's finally firing. So it fires, it just doesn't move. So that's quite okay. We can build another supply pad over here. So, now that we're at third tech, we can build other things like a hijacked banshee. This is just a regular Banshee from the looks of it with the boost ability already on. I don't know if it has Sacrifice or Repeating Cannon, but I do know that this is really cool to have in your army composition. You can also build Hornets and Hawks. Of course, the regular Vultures. So, <laughs> I thought that was kind of neat. We can also go to the Pelican menu. And these pelicans are so cool. It's kind of similar to the more leaders mod that I was testing out last time. We can build different types of pelicans. So I'm going to build this combat pelican. And it's going to have a weapon on it. And just like the, the mod video I covered previously, 
this can get into combat, which is really cool. Going over to the vehicles, this isn't too terribly different right here. This is everything that we're used to. However, there's a huge Warthog page. So here's the double barrel Warthog. This Warthog has an upgraded machine gun turret that shoots twice as many bullets, dealing twice the damage. So that's what that was from earlier. There's also the Rocket Warthog, which is... It says it's an anti-air scout. Then we have the Special Rocket Hog. I believe that's what that Warthog is down here. We have the regular Warthogs. Let's see what happens. Have I queued this up? I don't think I have. Yeah, so there's not a whole big difference on the vehicle page. So here's the combat pelican. I think that looks really sick. Personally. So the final one... Well, I guess it's not the final because we can also build that. The Sentinel Depot. And this is where you can build the different types of Sentinels from the various maps. So if, if you played Halo Wars 1, this is all very familiar to you. And we know all... we know these guys. Next, we can build uh, cargo ships. If you build that one, it increases our pop cap by 20. On this pelican, this is where we can build a lot of our heroes. So what's unique is we can build red team individually by name. Um, and they have their different weapons. So this is kind of like Halo Wars 2, but if you played Halo Wars 1, the three Spartans were unnamed in multiplayer, and I believe they were meant to signify Alice, Douglas, and Jerome, but they always had the same weapon. They started with SMGs, then got chain gun, then got Spartan lasers. We can also build Spartan 69 Jones. I don't know if this is with the lore or not, or this could be a non-canon addition here. You can also build the Anders and Forge leader team which is just the two of them on foot together as one squad. And you can also build them separately. I like the Forge Warthog myself. You can, you can build multiple of them. I believe the way that this works is from this, you can pick and, pick and choose up to six. So if you want six Alices, you can. And I believe going back to Anders Tower, getting the Spartan uh, which one is it? An extra Spartan upgrade, which is only 150. That should increase it to 7. Let's see if that happens here. Ready to roll. I think it will. Reinforcements research. No, it doesn't. That's okay. Ready to roll. Let's go. So now we have Let's Forge from the campaign, who's... OP. I thought there was another page to this, but I guess I was mistaken. All and I, I, that's really All it. Um, there is the Sun Devil vehicle. Where is that located, actually? I'm a little bit overwhelmed with where that would be. I thought it would be in here. Maybe it's in here. Or where do you even build the elephants? Enemy engagement. Um Ooh, increased production upgrade five percent more on the supply pads. We will do that. I don't think I wanna build this cargo ship too. It's just like the one from Arcadia. Okay, so it houses more population. Now we're up to 70. Um, oh, okay. This is where it is. It's the landing pad. Yeah, okay. So we click this. We can build the Badger. Um, I, I can show you this. I, From what I know is in Halo Wars modding, you can't include new assets. Everything in here has to be pre-existing assets that you kind of mix and match. We're having issues with our units getting stuck here. And the Badger 
doesn't really have any animations to it. It looks kind of strange and pathetic, but I guess this was in the game that was really never used. And these things arrive on a pelican and they land on this landing pad. So if we, uh, if you look carefully, the wheels don't turn and the, the vehicle guns don't turn or, or anything of that sort, but it does fire. I've used this in combat in the past. Let's send everyone down here. All units. Except most most of these units Moving don't want to move. Which is okay. Think about the rhinos, which we use in the campaign here. Gremlins, wolverines again. Here's the sun devil. I'll build that. It kind of looks like a scorpion with slider barrels on the end. I need to go to fourth tech. Let me upgrade this reactor. I'll also research carpet bombs. Make things a little easier. All units. Okay, so we're moving now. Let's roll. I can hear something firing. Oh, it's this. Oh, my pelican. It's attacking the hunters. L O L. That's really sad that these guys don't want to move. That's all right. So here's the sun double. Here you can Enemy see it looks kind of like a scorpion with the shorter barrels. It's it's pretty pretty good against uh, pretty good against air. Fear the pelican. You can also build like the medical pelican. Um, this is very similar to a nightingale. And it just heals your troops. Improve. Let's go to the second page. So we have your heavy scorpion, your grizzly tank, and Cobra Mark II. This is the Cobra with the missile launcher on it. Reactor improved. I thought this was really, really cool. Okay, now we'll go ahead and do an attack. This is... All units. It's really an overwhelming amount of units. But I really appreciate the no compromises in this mod. And if you're someone who just loves exploring and, and tinkering with different types of army compositions, but you're tired of the limitations of units in Halo Wars 1, this is a great way to, to really explore. Before we finish... I want to build this build hog that I, I mentioned about the beginning. And this is so cool because this really showed to me that the design of Halo Wars 1 didn't necessarily need to have the base buildings locked to the firebase here. Um, and I, I thought it was the way the game was the assets of the game. But when you see this warthog really build around kind of understand what I'm saying. Where is it? All units. I hope it didn't glitch out. Scout Warthog. Is the base locked? It's not. A rally point's there. It's not that one. It's not that one. <laughs> it's not that one. I hope it's not stuck in here. There it is. I found it. Okay. So the way that this Warthog works... Oh, he's actually stuck in there. I'll fix that. The way that this works is to get your Warthog, your build Warthog, to build something, you need to go somewhere. Well, And it recommends that you do it on flat terrain. Oh dear, that's not good. In my sight. Well, that's so rude. And horrible timing. Let's try this again. There goes my pelican. Oh, that heavy turret is so good. 
It's really meant to be the equivalent of Siege. Okay, here's our new Warthog. We will go over here where it's safe. There is a warning on this to say, like, you know, have some courtesy when you're building this, because it is kind of OP, but I love this idea. When you use your Y ability of this Warthog, it will kind of create a building slot for you to choose. So we're on pretty flat ground here. I'll use my Y ability, and all of this stuff comes up. We can build some new things like landmines and other things that we're used to. We can have a construction pad, a base turret, our landing pad, our watchtower, our sentinel depot. For the sake of this, it's 2,500 resources to build a construction pad. So I'll click that. And if we back up here, we have a base pad. And let's say, hey, I want to start training some vehicles. There you go. <laughs> it just kind of builds it wherever you do your Y ability. And that, that's really neat. And it, it has a cooldown timer. To get around this, I guess you could have multiple build hogs. I want to see what the landmine looks like. Okay. We can actually upgrade it. Which is even cooler. That an incendiary mine. It has a little icon on it too, which is neat. Vehicle depot complete. So now our vehicle depot is complete. And I'll just train a scorpion out of it. Turret improved. And there's the, uh, there's the mine there. Let's see what else happens. A lot of this other stuff is pretty expensive. Just build a watchtower here. Good to go. For some, uh, coverage. All unit. Let's see what happens when this tank is done. Does it, I, I forget if it comes out of the ground or if it's delivered by a pelican. I think it just pops from the ground. Yeah, there it goes. Almost as if it, it thinks that there's a firebase here, but we know that not to be true. So that can, that's that's a really really brief overview of this mod. I, I know it's it's there's a lot of content here, but you can tell this was thoughtfully crafted, and it's excellent in my opinion. Um, I, I should mention that this mod does work for the campaign. So if you really want to get really creative on the campaign, you can. Um, I know there's some issues on the campaign. There is a lot of helpful documentation in the mod um, when you download it. So you won't be really overwhelmed. You can see that badger firing out there too, by the way. Which is kind of neat. And also the sun devil. So yeah, if you want some assistance on the mod on either using it for campaign or skirmish, you have to do some tinkering around in the files. You just have to move one file right now. If you're going to play skirmish or campaign, the mod doesn't work for either or. So you just have to do a simple, you know, quit the game, move one file, and then restart the game, and then it, it'll work for um, those different game modes. And there's also, there's even videos uh, instructions in the mod folder as well when you download it, which is something I, I never see because uh, people who usually make the mod have horrible documentation. Um, and that's, that's not... I'm not saying that just for Halo Wars. I'm saying this for any game mod <laughs> that you download. There's usually not good documentation. So, huge shout-out to Nomad for making great notes. And for a really well-crafted mod, I highly encourage you to download it. Link to it's in the description. And try out the other mods uh, for Halo Wars. That includes the Morg Leaders mod, the Nutritious mod, and so on and so forth. You are victorious. Thanks for watching, everyone. There's a playlist in the description or on the video for you to check out more Halo Wars Definitive Edition mod videos. And I'll see you next time, James.